embodied by the president, claiming a purchase in what had for centuries been understood to be the inviolable territory of society. To be sure, President Obama is not the Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV. He's not contesting with the Pope for the legal authority to appoint bishops. But whether he knew he was doing this or not, the President in his Notre Dame address was usurping the bishop's right to define the doctrinal and moral boundaries of the Catholic community. Then there is the marriage debate. There's no need to rehearse this at length. Marriage is one of those societal institutions, like the parent-child bond, that antedate the state historically and are prior to the state ontologically and morally. It is not within the competence of the state to define marriage as the union of two men or two women, any more than it is within the state's competence to define marriage in polygamous or polyandrous terms. Any state that does so has breached the border between society and state in a way that gravely endangers civil society. The use of coercive state power to compel recognition of what is neither true nor good in the name of a nihilist insouciance toward the true and a relativist contempt of the good. Such dictatorship will sooner or later lead to what the late Pope John Paul II described as, quote, open or thinly disguised totalitarianism. More recently, the church has taken up the cudgels of public argument in defense of marriage, rightly understood, in defense of its own integrity as a self-governing institution, and in defense of the conscience rights of the people of the church. How, for example, is it possible to achieve universal health insurance or health coverage while honoring the principle of subsidiarity. If the principle of subsidiarity is true, as we must affirm to be the case, then there must be answers to this question and to related questions in the fields of education and social welfare. The search for those answers, which may well lie in a reconception of the roles of both government and mediating institutions in these fields, ought to help in the process of regrounding American public life in two of its foundational truths.